for those of you guys who got here on time, we're going to get started. Uh, those people who are coming in late will miss the first half. The idea today is that I would like to share with you why MLM is the most amazing business on the planet. Um, and I truly believe that I've been involved in the 30 years and I think it's the most incredible business. And I think it's the most underrated business as well. And I think in the next three to five years, it's going to show that this is going to become one of the premier ways of doing business in the world. And this presentation specifically geared to highlight those facts. Okay, so here we go. The ultimate route to market. So the agenda today is we're going to be talking about traditional retail and how that's been handled over the past. We're going to talk about e-commerce. We're going to talk about multi-level marketing. And we're also going to talk about the effects of something like a pandemic, like the coronavirus that's hitting us at the moment and artificial intelligence and the impact that that's going to have on the, the world at large. So let's get started. I don't know how many of you have ever done business with traditional retailers. But I can tell you we've done it and it is a pain in the fundamentals. Okay, I'll just give you a description of what happens. First of all, you've got to get listed. And to get listed, you've got to deal with the buyer. So you've got to go and see the buyer. And this buyer has got to give you um, permission to list your product. Now, what he's going to do, he's going to charge you to list the product. I spoke to a company that does wine and they reckon to get themselves listed in one of the big retailers cost them half a million rands just to get listed. That's just to put the product on the shelf. Then the guy's going to charge you depending on where you want it on the shelf. Then he wants to absolutely nail you to the wall in terms of margins. He wants to make sure he absolutely skins every inch of margin off you. Then he's going to negotiate the fact that he will pay you on 30, 60 or 90 days. And if he pays you on time, he's going to give you the honor of paying him a commission for paying him on time. So when you go and negotiate with these buyers, they are really tough. And there's a thousand people around the block all wanting to get their products into that retailer. So if they don't like your face, they don't like what you're doing, you're not prepared to take their terms. They wash you out and they take the next person who walks in the door. So dealing with these buyers can be extremely tough. And um, then what they want to do is they want you to market your product. So they will put the product on their shelves at extreme cost, low margins, but they want you to go out and they want you to put big advertising campaigns together. So you put this massive advertising campaign together because what you're trying to do is you're trying to create pull off the shelves. And you know, in retail, what happens is a person walks down the shelf and they look for product recognition. If they recognize the product, there's a high ch chance they're going to buy it, but they will still look at the three products around it and then they will pick on price. So you're spending a mass amount of advertising, trying to compete with the big boys out there, to get your product into the face of the client and he's just going to go along there pick on price put it into the cart and off he goes so you've got very short amount of time to get him to make a decision on your product then if the company the retailer decides to put advertising out there let's say they run specials or they run a, an advertising in the newspaper and your product appears in that you have to pay for that so you have to contribute to the the, the advertising and they will stipulate that you need to give x amount discount on the product so not only are you paying for your own advertising, you're also paying for their advertising, you're paying for the product to be on their shelf, and you're providing them with discounts to create additional pulls through their tools. Then you've got your stock level problems. So if you don't have stock on their shelves, there's penalties. So you get penalized heavily if you run out of stock on their shelves. So if they sell out your stock and they put in an order, you need to move that product in there quickly. So your entire stock management process and your ordering process, procurement process has got to be really slick in order to make sure you don't get penalized. And, I, you know, this can lead to really difficult situations. So I'd like to tell you a story about a friend of mine. We used to run an ad agency or I ran an ad agency back in the day. And this client came to us, they had this amazing product and they wanted to list it. Now, I don't want to mention the name of the product but they want to listed the product in one of the major retailers. And so we went along to the retailers and we got it listed at all of the costs, as I explained. They then had to break a big advertising agent a campaign. So we put this ad campaign out and for two months, we advertised this product. Now they were getting paid on 90 days. So what happened is initially we put X number of product onto the shelves. Let's just call it a hundred thousand units. I can't remember the number. It's quite a few years ago. 
So we put 100,000 units onto the shelves. We broke the advertising and the advertising was effective. So within a couple of weeks, boom, all the, all the stock is sold out. So what we did is they restocked the shelves. So now the company, the retailer said, listen, we need more stock because it's moving so fast. So instead of putting 100,000 units on the shelves, they put 200,000 units on the shelves. So now we one month in, we got 300,000 units on the shelf. The advertising is really effective. So the next month we put 400,000 units on the shelf. So now we've, we kind of, you know, 7, 700,000 units, 600,000 units of product has been put in the shelf in 60 days. Just remember, we're only getting paid on 90 days. So we're getting, we've got no money coming in yet. And at that point, the advertising came to an end. Now, when the advertising dipped or came to an end, suddenly the sales dried up. So the company came to our client and said, listen, this third month, we're not getting any pull through. It's not working for us. So we would like to actually delist your product. Could you please uplift your product from us? The guy said, but you know, you, you're sitting with 400,000 units on the shelf. How am I going to uplift it? They said, not a problem. We will take it. We will have it destroyed and we will re remove or pay for the cost of destroying it out of what we owe you for the first batch that you sent us. Now, this guy didn't have the cash to take it to uplift it. So what happened is the retailer destroyed the product. The amount of money that it cost to destroy the product was exactly the amount of money, coincidentally, that they owed him. And as a result, his company went bankrupt. He lost his house, he lost his family, he lost his business, he lost everything because he didn't have the capital or the cash flow to deal with this scenario. Now, these guys didn't care. Why do they care? You know, they were trying to use his product to drive down the prices of one of the other major um, suppliers. So he landed up without being paid for any of his work over a three month period. Of course, his suppliers didn't get paid. I mean, there was just a whole mess of a knock on effect. Now, unless you've got deep pockets and you've got long arms, getting into the retail space and competing effectively and actually making money out of it is very, very difficult. And I would highly recommend that you actually stay away from it. And you can talk to anybody who's been in the space. You know, I've spoken to many people. Few of them want to go on the record because they're so scared that if one of the major retailers hear them talking about this, that they're never going to get listed again. They're going to get, there's going to be retribution. But the bottom line is this is a difficult, tough, cutthroat business to do business in. You are swimming with huge sharks here. So what a lot of companies say is, okay, well, look, instead of doing that, let's set up our own operation. We're going to set up our own business, our own store. We're going to sell our products out of our own operation. And that has its own set of, of, of problems. First of all, setting up a business is capital intensive. You need offices, you need spaces, you need a shop front, you need a product, you need all of that kind of stuff that's capital intensive to get it up and running, your, your fittings, your shop fittings, et cetera. And then you've got your overheads. It's your staff and your rent and your telephones and your cash deposits. All of that kind of stuff is, in, is tied up in your overheads. Your businesses generally are localized. If you own a small business, you've got to depend on people in your area coming to your business, walking in the door and purchasing from you. And it just takes a pandemic like we've, we've got now to realize that as soon as people are not walking in the door, you're not making money and everybody gets laid off, the staff is gone, et cetera. So having a localized business is really tough. You're dealing with cash. Now, in some parts of the world, that's not a problem. In South Africa, dealing with cash, big problem, because there's people who would like to walk in the door and take the cash away from you. So the risks in terms of dealing with cash are high here. And then, of course, you've got the stock management. You've got to make sure that you've got enough stock on hand. You are carrying the cost of the stock. It's sitting on your shelves. All of the risk in terms of capital that that uh, represents. And then we have this wonderful thing called shrinkage. And that is a euphemism for people stealing you blind. They call it shrinkage because a percentage of your product just shrinks and disappears. Now, I had a friend who went out and bought a... Um, franchise. And so I'm not going to mention the name Wimpy because it, if it gets out there, um, then they'll know who I'm talking about. So we won't mention their name. But this franchise, he, he paid a fortune for it. He paid millions for the franchise. He had it fitted out according to their, um, their rules. And then he started running it and he discovered he had to be there 365 days a year because if he wasn't there, they would deliver the cattle live. And he told me, he said that what would happen is the cows would walk in the back door, graze all the salad and walk straight out the back door. He'd never see them again. 
he had huge problems with staff. He was having to deal with the staff. He was there to open up at six o'clock in the morning. He was there to close at eight o'clock in the evening. Couldn't take holidays. And what was really crazy, he said to me that he's on average, he was taking between 10 and 15,000 rands a month in his pocket as a salary for running this business. So running your own business has its own set of problems and it can be really difficult, very cost intensive and not necessarily profitable. One of the things I say to people who are starting their own businesses is that you basically own a job. You are working for the most difficult person on the planet and that's yourself. You will, you'll be the most difficult boss you ever had. And so starting your own business, I mean, it's a way of making a living, but sure, I wouldn't recommend it. Then a lot of people decide, okay, well, look, starting your own business, difficult, getting into retail is difficult. Why don't we do an online store? And e-commerce is definitely a massive step up from everything else that we've talked about. Because here, suddenly you've got this virtual environment. You've got the store that sits online. People can come to it from anywhere in the world. So you've got real reach. So doing business via e-commerce is a really powerful way of doing things. You can have an infinite number of products and, and you can go out and trade. And so that's really powerful. But there are challenges because if you have a look at e-commerce as a, a way of doing business, the first thing is that you are, you, there's heavy competition. There are 24 million online stores right now all screaming and shouting as loud as they possibly can to get you to come and spend your money with them. So if you put an online store together, yes, you can get business. Yes, you can get traction. Yes, you can go out and find the people, but you are competing with 24 million other online people who are all desperately trying to make a living. Next, the ad word and advertising space is absolutely fiercely competitive. And the way that these advertising companies work, Google and Facebook, et cetera, is that you're bidding for the advertising. So if I've got, if I'm prepared to pay $10 for a click and you prepare to pay $5 for a click, well, I get the clicks, you don't. So suddenly you've got this fierce competition in AdWords and advertising where you're trying to compete with 24 million other people all trying to compete in that space, all trying to get voices, uh, faces and, and eyeballs on their sites. Very difficult. Then there's a massive amount of skepticism. When you go to buy something online, the first thing you want to know is, is this a legitimate company? And if you haven't seen a ton of advertising about the company, you're skeptical. You're scared about putting your credit card down there because you don't know where that credit card's going and you don't know where the money's going and you don't know if you're ever going to get your product. So just before the lockdown, I bought a monitor, which I wanted delivered. And I bought it from this company and ah, I, you know, I just felt bad about it. I didn't know who they were. I tried to chase them down. I looked at the Google. Oh, they seem to be okay. I phoned the, the payment gateway. They said, no, they've been doing business with them for a while. And of course I bought the product. And so it was about a month or month and a half before the lockdown. Well, the product never arrived. And I've tried to get hold of these guys and they're just not getting back to me. And so I don't know where my monitor is. I don't know where my money is. And I don't know where these company is. And I mean, they might be gone. We might never see them again. So this level of skepticism is justified. And so in order to get your face in front of people with e-commerce, you have to create a lot of advertising to generate the credibility to make sure people trust you so they'll put their money in the card. So the card's in, the, in your, in your um, checkout process. And then it is extremely price sensitive in the e-commerce space because what do I do? I go online, I say I want this monitor, so I typed in what monitor I want. It brings up 20 stores that are selling that monitor in, in, in South Africa, in this case. I go through the stores, I find the ones I like, then I have a look at the prices, and then I buy the cheapest one. And so the price sensitivity is huge. And unless you are, like your margins are paper thin, you're not selling any product. So it makes it really difficult in that space as well. And then it's all on you. You are doing the marketing and the advertising and you're managing everything. You've got to either have staff or do it yourself. There's nobody to help you. It's a very, very difficult space to trade in. We have a, a, a friend of ours who runs a very big um, e-commerce store and he's got an army of people to run it. An absolute army of people. His overheads are through the roof and it's a big, big business to run. So e-commerce is an option, but it's not the easiest option. Now MLM 
absolutely addresses every aspect of business, business, but it makes it easy. And I'm going to show you why. In my opinion, this is the space where everybody should be. Going through retail is insane. I don't know why anybody would do it. It's just like masochism. Running your own business is extremely difficult. I mean, you know, don't you ever want a holiday? What's going on there? Getting into e-commerce, okay, that is definitely a way of doing things, but it's still a very difficult, hard business to be in. But the MLM space, I mean, it's just the most amazing space to be in because it's actually one of the few companies, few organizations, few businesses, few spaces where you can actually build a business, bootstrap it from nothing with absolutely no capital. If you don't have any capital, you can bootstrap this thing from absolutely nothing. And I'll tell you some stories about that in a minute. Number one, you're the buyer. So the first thing is you are going out, you are finding products, and you're the one negotiating the deals. So if you're any good, you can negotiate the 30, 60, 90 days. You can negotiate the listing fee. You can negotiate all of those things that the retail companies were negotiating with you if you were going into them. You can negotiate that with your suppliers. And right now, in the, in the environment we're in, companies are desperate, desperate to sell their products. Manufacturers, importers, People who've got products to sell are desperate to find people to sell their products. So now is a great time to negotiate good deals with people who've got products to sell. And if you're clever, you negotiate a good deal. A couple of things I'm, I'm going to mention here. Make sure you've got a contract in place so the guy can't pull the plug on you. Make sure that you're getting a good deal. Make sure that you've got everything in writing. And next week, I'm going to be doing a whole webinar on choosing products, pricing products, all of that kind of stuff. We'll get to that in detail. But... You really have the power here and you make your money by buying the products at really good prices. The next thing is that this is not a price sensitive environment. One of the great things about multi-level marketing is that the salesperson sits down with the buyer. And if you have done your training right, if you've taught the salesperson why this product is amazing, they sit down with that buyer and they spend time explaining to the buyer why this is the best product in the world. I'll give you an example. Amway's got this product, this nutrition, nutritional products. So when I first heard about this, I thought, wow, this is the most expensive product in the world. And then somebody sat down and told me the story. They said, listen, Amway owns the farm that, that actually grows all of the raws for this, this product. Not only do they own the farm, but they own all the farms around that farm. And none of the farms around them or their farmers are allowed to use any kind of pesticide or herbicide. To control the insects, they release spiders into the farms to keep the insects at bay. And then from the moment they harvest to the moment this product is packed into the bottle and ready for the shelf is 24 hours. And then it's one of the most highly dense nutrition products on the market in the world. Now suddenly you say, wow, that is incredible. Where else are you going to get a product that's that natural, that that made in that way, that's so absolutely amazing, and it only costs X? Wow, what a deal! Suddenly, I went from being think, thinking that this is an expensive product to wow, this is actually real value for money. I need to use this product. Now, if that product was on a shelf in a retail store, you got no chance because the guy's walking down. He saw a thirty-second advert three weeks ago. He doesn't care about it. He looks at the products. He picks the cheapest one off the shelf. He's gone. Doesn't matter that it's not good. Doesn't matter it's not the best. So in this space, you have the opportunity to have a great product with a great margin, and you've got somebody who's advocating for that product in the person's space. And if you do a good job about training them on how to advocate for that product, you don't have to worry about margins. You're not having some buyer squeezing your margins to the floor to try and get you to list then it is a completely cash upfront business. This is the part that I absolutely love about this business. The cash is in the bank before the product leaves the office. And you check the cash is in the bank. This is not a case of, I put the money in the bank, please send the product. No, no, no. The accountant goes and eyeballs the cash. Make sure that that, actually, that, that cash is actually there. And then they pick, pack, and ship the product at that point. Now, if you've negotiated, let's say you've negotiated a 90 day deal with your supplier. Now you're sitting with the cash for that product for 90 days. So that means you can fund the entire growth of your business. The entire growth of your business can be funded out of cash flow.
because what happens is that I sell, let's say I sell a million rands worth of product in January. I sell a million in February. I sell a million in March. Now I'm sitting with 3 million rand in the bank. Okay. In April, I have to pay the first million, but I make another million. So what I'm doing is I'm rolling over 3 million rand at any one time based on the fact that I'm buying the product and getting 90 days and getting cash up front. On top of it, there's a 15% VAT component. So what happens is that I'm holding on to the VAT for 15 days before I have to pay this guy. So the VAT sits in my bank for, sorry, 90 days. So the VAT sits in my bank for 90 days. When I finally pay him after 90 days, okay, I have to pay the bank out, but I had the advantage of that. Now, the beauty of this, the real power of this is that if you've got that kind of cash sitting in your bank and you are rolling that cash over, the banks love you. So that opens up the opportunity for leverage. So when you start growing, when you start getting that absolute exponential curve and you need capital, the banks have seen, oh, well, listen, this guy's got all of this cash flowing through the bank and they can utilize this, that credibility to lend you money against. One thing I just need to say to you is that you need to make jolly sure, and we'll discuss this in next week's webinar, that you have got contracts with your suppliers so that they don't screw you, they don't stop supplying you, they don't jack the price up on you, they don't change your terms. You need to have good contracts, and we'll discuss that in next week's um, webinar. Then with multi-level marketing, what I love is everything. Everything is outsourced. You can make every single part of your business a variable cost. Because remember, nobody comes to your office. Nobody cares about your office. Your clients, your network is spread throughout the country, throughout the world. There's a handful of people who potentially could be geographically close to you. So your entire brand, your entire uh, view to the world is your website and your dealers. So you need an incredible net, uh, network marketing system, website, that side of things needs to be really excellent. And then you need to train your people. You need to provide them with brochures and leaflets and posters and all of the good stuff that give the image of your company out there because that is your brand. So when somebody sits with the client and they hand over the brochures, the client must look at the brochure and think, what an amazing company. When they pass over the product, they must look at the package and think, what an amazing company. When they go to your website to purchase, they must look at the systems and say, what an amazing company. They're never going to see you. And all of those things are outsourced. So for instance, you, you manufacture your brochures. Your, your network members buy those things. They don't cost you money, they buy them. You have a website, everything can be attached as a variable cost. Um, we had a little company, I started a little company called Acorn Kids um, back in the early 2000s. And what we did there is we had a manufacturer in Joburg who manufactured the product. The product then got sent to, at the time it was called Burko, it's now called Aramex. It went to Burko and sat on their shelves. We had two ladies sitting in Cape Town handling any queries. An order would come into the system. The system would inform Burko to pick it, pack it, and ship it to the client. So we, as a company, we had a tiny, tiny, tiny little office that held two people, two computers, telephone line, internet line. We ran a, we, we ran a network marketing business with close to 10,000 agents. And we didn't have to touch anything. The fulfillment was handled automatically, and we paid a percentage of the invoice cost to, uh, uh, to Aramex. The manufacturing has happened automatically. Our systems informed the manufacturer how much they needed to uh, manufacture, when they needed to manufacture, and where they needed to develop to deliver it to. The IT systems were all paid for on a percentage of turnover basis. All of the marketing was paid for and done by the agents. All of the training was paid for and done by the leadership of those agents. So at the end of the day, we could run a, a business with between five and 10,000 agents with two people sitting behind a desk in Cape Town. Now, how many businesses can you say can do that kind of thing and create everything across the board as a variable cost? And so outsourcing within the MLM space is something that can be done very easily, and you can create a really amazing business um, model through that. And then you are harnessing the most powerful form of advertising that has ever happened in the world. And that is word of mouth. If you see an advert, you doubt it. But if your best friend comes to you and said, listen, I went to this restaurant the other day and yeah, I had the best meal I've ever had in my life. I tell you what, 
those Brussels sprouts were cooked to a T. Okay, you're going to believe that person. You, you are going to understand that they have got your best interest at heart. You know them, you trust them, you like them, you believe them. If they tell you a movie was good, you believe it. If they tell you a meal was good, you believe it. If they rec refer a, a play to you, you believe it. And what you're doing in the MLM space is you are paying people to talk about your product to their friends. Now, I need to just stress here, 99.999% of all people are not con artists. So if you've got a rotten product, don't expect people to talk about it. They won't. People are honest. They want to say something honest about the product and they won't lie to their friends. But if you've got a great product and the product does what you say it does, and you've trained your people as to why their product is amazing, I promise you they are out there and they are telling anybody who will listen about the product. And that form of advertising is just absolutely gold. There's, I mean, if, if every company in the world could get people to talk about their products the way the multi-level marketing industry gets people to talk about their products, they wouldn't need any other kind of advertising. This is an incredibly effective advertising mechanism. And if you go to MLM for CEOs and you go down to the uh, bottom of the page, there's a latest webinars and you watch last week's webinar, if you haven't seen it, you'll see there I discuss how you can turn these people into absolute marketing machines. And that is one of the most powerful and effective things in terms of the multi-level marketing space. Now, I looked at the stats globally. I've done a lot of research on this. On average, the average agent worldwide sells about $133.47 worth of product per month per member. That's what the averages are. That's the global average, $133 per month per member. Now you add to that an exponential component and you can ramp a business up very quickly. You can reach very, very big turnovers in, in unbelievably rapidly within the space. Now we talk to our clients and we're going to be doing a webinar and doing launches in a couple of weeks time. But the idea is that you as a company, there's the most difficult thing you have to do. You have to find a hundred founding members. This is your hundred people that are going to be the core of your business. And we say to you, if you find a hundred people, they're going to do about $133 per month sales. That'll give you about $30, $13,000 a month in sales. You can't retire on that, I know, but that's the start. Now, if you go through our launch strategy, by the time you finished with the hard launch, you should have around 3,000 people in your team doing that $133. That should give you about $400,000 in turnover. If you're looking on just a 1.1 um, ratio growth, so not a steep exponential uh, uh, growth curve, but a very gradual exponential growth curve. Within six months, you're doing $700,000. Within 12 months, you're, being, do, you're doing $1.2 million. Now, this is not pie in the sky. We've done this. We had a little client who's selling nutrition dense porridge. Within six months, they signed up 60,000 agents did 56 million rand in turnover. So this is absolutely doable. And if you do it right, and you do it, um, we can train you how to do this, we can show you how to do this, but if you do it right, you can create this exponential growth and you can be very, very quickly at massive turnover. The beauty of this is because this is not price sensitive, because you can actually set your own margins, that $1.2 million equates to somewhere in the region of $400,000 in net, net profit. So you can generate very serious profits out of this business and of course pay huge commissions in the process another thing i absolutely like love about this business and we are sitting in a situation and i'll get into it in detail in a minute is that you are providing people with opportunity um, i'll give you the stats just now but i think there's something like just in south africa alone we're going to have around about two million people who are unemployed as of this coronavirus outbreak and they reckon about 200,000 businesses are not going to reopen after this. So there are going to be a load of people looking for opportunity. Now you are going to people and saying, listen, we have got this unbelievable business. It's a business in a box. We are going to provide you with absolutely everything for a very low initial investment. So we're going to give you the products and we're going to give you the leaflets and we're going to give you brochures and we're going to give you online systems and we're going to give you training. And we are going to give you 40% of the share of the product's uh, um, value without any risk. So you get up to 40% out 
with no risk, zero risk at all. And that's pretty exciting because now you are taking great profit, no risk. The company's providing the entire infrastructure and back end. And all you having to do is market the product. So this is the most perfect, amazing, incredible micro business that has ever been created. There's zero overheads because it's just you, you go out, you do the business and you can leverage a team. So if you've got some uh, ability to manage people, you can get a small sales team together. You can help manage that team and off you go. Now there's a, on MLM for CEOs, there's a interview that I did with a girl called Gail and she generated 6 million pounds out of Avon just by starting and introducing one person and helping that person understand the business and then growing the business from there. She did, uh, developed a six million pound a year business. And you should go and listen to that, uh, that interview. It's actually quite amazing. So here, an, an individual, a person with no opportunity, no money, no background, no anything, no hope can get into the business, can go out there and can just plug away at it and build up a massive organization for themselves and share in a large chunk of the company's turnover every month. So let's look at the state of MLM. Here we go. First of all, globally, MLM right now is doing about 189 billion US dollars. Commissions, they paid out last year, 76 billion in commissions. That equates to $108 million a day that they're paying in commissions. So this is not a Mickey Mouse business. This is a bigger business. This is more, more income than generated by the entire trucking industry in the States. So it's a huge, huge, huge industry. If you have a look at the products that are being sold, um, you can see here the two big ones are cosmetics and personal care and health and wellness. Uh, that constitutes about 64% of the total. But you can see $60 billion in cosmetics and personal care and $64 billion in wellness, just there. But every single po possible product and service can be sold via the MLM space. So clothing, accessories, home care stuff, um, vacuum cleaners for vac, I'll show you just now, is doing $1.1 billion in, in sales of vacuum cleaners using multi-level marketing. Um, books, toys, stationery, that's $4.4 billion. Foodstuffs and beverages, um, home improvement, utilities, I mean, $5.2 billion in utilities. Financial services, and that includes things like legal services. And then there's a whole host of other um, companies who are in the space doing amazing, amazing volumes um, with multi-level marketing. And the beauty is that the industry is growing it at a 4.2% compound annual in, uh, 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 growth rate. So right now, there's 10 million people full-time involved in this business. This is 10 million people who put a roof over their head, food on their table through the MLM industry. That is more people than are in trucking in the world. So it is massive, just the permanent people who are in the space just doing um, multi-level marketing full-time. There's 42 million people doing it part-time. These are people who are supplementing their income by being involved in multi-level businesses. And then there's 64 or uh, 65 million people who are casually involved in the industry where they are buying sometimes, selling sometimes, you know, just involved casually in the business. If you have a look at the, uh, the, the sex, uh, or let's not call it sex, let's call it gender, 74% of the people in the business are ladies and 26% are guys, which is absolute proof that women are more intelligent than men. What can I say? Then we, then we have on the, on the age group, you can see here 20% um, in the 25 to 35. So 26% 35 to 40s, 24% 45 to 54, and then of course over 55 with 22%. So there's a fairly even spread, but your product needs to match the, the people you, you're aiming at. For instance, Acorn Kids, our, our company, had a lot of people in the 18 to 24 range because it was aimed at small children between the ages of sort of one and four. Um, other companies that are selling health and wellness things, you'll find that they average ages in the 45 to 54. Um, bracket because everybody's starting to panic about their health at that stage, et cetera. So it's across the board though, people of all ages uh, and all genders are getting involved in the, the business. Now here comes a question that I keep on getting asked. Why does MLMs have such a bad reputation? Well, 
The first thing is that there's a lot of unscrupulous people out there. And in any industry, I don't care what industry you're in, there are unscrupulous people who are doing illegal, immoral, unethical things. The problem with MLM is that the marketing mechanisms, the way that we sell is so powerful, is so unbelievably powerful that even if you don't have a product, you can still make money. So what happens is these guys come in with these schemes where everybody's just parting with money. The guy at the top runs away with the cash and everybody else is sitting there wondering what happened. But it's because the marketing mechanisms are so powerful. But you can't blame an industry because some unethical people are utilizing it in an immoral, in unethical, and, and bad way. Now, within multi-level marketing, you get this thing. This is a pyramid scheme. I'm sure you've all heard of that. And this pyramid scheme concept is made up of two words. It's made up of the word pyramid, and it's made up of the word scheme. Okay, those are the two words that make a pyramid scheme. Now, the issue is that there's nothing wrong with a pyramid. The government is a pyramid. You've got your president, you've got the executive branch, you've got Congress. It's a pyramid, okay? If you have a family, there's more grandparents, there's more children than grandparents. It's a pyramid in shape. If you take a look at a school, you've got the principal, the teachers, the students you've got a pyramid. If you take a look at any business model, you've got the CEO, you've got the management, you've got the ground staff, it's a pyramid. Multi-level marketing is no different. There's you, there's your front line, there's your down line, it's a pyramid. There's nothing wrong with pyramids. Churches, schools, families, businesses, governments, all pyramids, no problem. The problem comes in with the scheme because nobody wants to be part of some sort of illegal scheme. And so there's ways of identifying what makes one of these businesses a scheme? So let's go through this. The first thing, and I, I see this all the time, the first thing that identifies a scheme is that your compensation plan is simple. So you'll have a compensation plan. The guy will say to me, I want to pay out over five levels, 5% 5 over five levels, and that's my compensation plan. Well, I can tell you right now, that is so close to an illegal pyramid that it's not even funny. I try to talk my clients out of that. Very often I can't, but bottom line is that is one of the key indicators that this is a scheme. Proper companies don't have those kind of simple compensation plans because there's a structure and a strategy behind how they reward their people. Okay, the next thing is retail commission. You have to, when you join one of these MLM companies, you have to be able to make money without signing up a single agent. So if I come into the business, let's say I join Avon, I must be able to take my kid out. I must be able to go and show my products to a client and the client must be prepared to buy those products without any um, involvement in the business whatsoever. Next, the product has got to be value for money. You know, you can't can air from Cape Town, sell it at a hundred rands and, and think that you're doing a good deal. The product has actually got to be something that a person would buy and use even if there wasn't a business opportunity attached to it. Now, that doesn't mean the product needs to be cheap. What it needs to be is good value for money. And you need to be able to justify the price that you're charging for that product. And the person who purchases the product needs to say, wow, best purchase I ever made. When I was a kid, we were selling a, a vacuum cleaner called a Rainbow. And it was a vacuum cleaner based on water. And it was the most amazing product I've ever seen in my life. It cost 6,000 rand at the time, which was an enormous amount of money, just absolutely crazy amount of money. I would go into a home and I would sit down with a client and I'd show them the product end to end. I would show them why it was the most amazing product. They would buy the product for 6,000 rand. And in six months, I could go back to them and they would tell me that it was the best thing they ever bought in their lives because the product was an amazing product. So the issue is not that it must be cheap. It just needs to be really good value for money. If the product is not good value for money, it's a scam. Then there needs to be a refund policy. If you buy the product and you can't sell it, don't want it, can't use it, you need to be able to give it back. Now, in some countries, South Africa being a prime example, you've got very strong protection around this. But in some countries, you don't. And so you've got to be really careful that the refund policy, wherever you are in the world, is of such a nature that people can give the product back. Otherwise, we're talking about a scam. Then commission on training. Yeah, oh, So many companies come in and they charge for training. And I'm not talking about charging somebody to train them to work on the stock exchange. I'm talking about training them to do the business that they're in. So they join ABC company 
then they charge them to teach them how to recruit people into ABC company. And then they pay commissions on the training that they did to do ABC company. Well, that's just a scam. And you need to stay away from those kind of businesses. And that's something you should avoid. Then unrealistic earning claims. Oh, this one really grates me. So a guy will go out and he'll say to his friend, you're not going to believe this. All you have to do is, there's those famous words, sit in your backside, do nothing. We're going to have a whole lot of people spilling down into your team. You don't have to do an ounce of work. You're going to make an absolute fortune. You don't have to do any work and I'll help you. Don't worry, I'll do it for you. And you're going to make millions. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Find me a business where I do nothing and earn money and I'm there, but I don't think anything like that is legal. Um, and certainly in the MLM space, that is considered a scam, totally unethical. So unrealistic earning claims. So the rule here around earning claims is that if you make a claim, you have to have something, somebody in your business actually earning the money that you're claiming they earn. So if you're saying you can earn $10,000 a month, you need to point to the person who is actually earning $10,000 a month and say, Jim did X, Y, and Z, and Jim is earning $10,000 a month. Then I can make that claim. But you can't sit down and put numbers down on a piece of paper and a spreadsheet and say, if you do this, pat your head, rub your stomach, stand on one leg, you're going to earn millions of, of, of dollars. That really doesn't work. And that would be considered a pyramid scam. Then front loading. This is what a lot of companies do. do. Um, some companies, some famous companies got into big trouble for this. What they do is they say, right, if you buy X amount of dollars worth of product, we're going to give you a different rank. We're going to give you a different package. We're going to put you on a different commission level. We're going to increase the amount of money you can earn out of this by buying a higher package. Well, that's illegal. You're not allowed to do that. So what happens then is the guy buys himself $40,000 worth of product. He's got this garage full of product. He can't give it back because there's no refund policy. And then he sits with this product. It goes off. He's lost his $40,000. And the industry as a whole gets a bad name. But of course, front loading is illegal. And that is absolute indication of a scam. Then the rules internationally say that you need to have approximately 30% of your people need to be IBOs. In other words, business agents. 70% of the people buying your product need to be pure customers. In other words, these are people who just buy the product. They don't have any dealings whatsoever as a networker. They're not selling the product. They're not referring the product. They're not recommending the product. All they are doing is consuming the product. Now that is a key one. A lot of the, specifically in South Africa, if they look at your businesses and they see that you have not got a 30-70 split, then they immediately start looking at you as saying this, you're probably a scam. And then they start digging deep into your business. So you really need to have strategies that allow people to sell the product directly to end users and the end users buy it because they love the product. And then last but not least, being a member of the DSA is a great idea. And the reason being is that you cannot join the DSA if you're not doing ethical business because they actually send experts into your business and they absolutely dissect your business and they work out to see whether you are doing anything that's illegal, immoral, unethical and contravening any laws. So they look through your contracts, your return policies, your pricing, they look through everything. And if they are happy with what you are doing, they will allow you to join the DSA. Now, I'm going to be doing an interview with the top guys in the DSA in the UK shortly, and you should listen to that. It's going to be a podcast on my podcast channel. But that is an area that you really need to think about if you are a serious contender and you're wanting to run a serious business is to apply to the DSA. You become an associate member for the first year if they're happy with you, and thereafter you become a full member. And I just think that that is a worthwhile exercise. And all of those things there... If you avoid these things and you do things right, you have got a legitimate, powerful MLM business rather than a scheme. So that's what gives this business a bad name is people are doing all of these crazy things instead of just running a legitimate business. These businesses are incredibly powerful. They generate enormous amounts of money. You don't need to do scammy things to get these businesses to work. They're just fantastic, out the blocks. And if you have a look at some of the companies out there, Prime America, they sell insurance. They've got 90,000 agents. They did 1.1 billion US dollars last year selling insurance. Amway has got 3 million IBOs. They did 10.9 billion US dollars. 10.9 billion. I mean, that's just a crazy number. 
Forever Living, what an amazing company. I just absolutely love this company. There's a podcast on my uh, MLM for CEOs channel with one of the guys from the UK who heads up the UK. Um, you should really listen to that. There's 750,000 IBOs in their business. They did $2.5 billion. They're in health and nutrition. So they've got these health drinks. They, use it, they sell aloe vera products. Amazingly effective business. Porvac, they sell vacuum cleaners. They've got 600,000 IBOs worldwide. They did $3 billion last year. $3 billion. And that is $3 billion that are going through people who wouldn't have had a business opportunity otherwise. These are all through individual people running their own little individual businesses. Avon, crazy, wonderful, amazing business. 6.5 million IBOs, $11 billion. I was speaking to one of the um, delivery companies the other day, and they said that they get so many deliveries into the black areas in South Africa for Avon that they're actually battling to keep up with their normal deliveries. Avon is just absolutely killing it worldwide. 6.5 million IBOs. They sell cosmetics and um, uh, uh, um, body care products. And then Tupperware. They sell plastic containers. Okay. Again, product is amazing. Lifetime guarantee. Right now, they've got 2.6 million IBOs and they're doing $2.6 billion. Now, just I need to point out here, guys, you can walk into any place. You can buy cosmetics across the counter. You can get aloe vera products across the counter. You can get Amway type nutrition across the counter. You can buy a vacuum cleaner across the counter. You can buy plastic things in, 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 in a, a, a normal retail store. And yet Tupperware still does $2.6 billion. Why? It's because they've got an amazing product, but even more so, they've got the most amazing method of marketing any business in the world. And that's the multi-level marketing play. It is incredible. So what do they have in pro pro all of these guys have in common? Amazing product. Absolutely brilliant compensation plans. Very high levels of retail sales. They're reliable return policies. They're honest. They're not going to scam you. They've got excellent free training. They teach their people and they spend an inordinate amount of time getting their people skilled up. And of course, they're all members of the DSA. Now, that's where, the, where we are at the moment. But what is going to be driving MLM today and for the next decade? And that's a huge thing. Hey, where are we going? Why am I so pumped about MLM? Why am I, during this lockdown, more excited than I've ever been about MLM in my life? You know, um, Churchill once said, never let a good crisis go to waste. And we are in a situation where this crisis that we're in is highlighting certain issues that I believe are right now prevalent and that for the next 10 to 15 years are going to be hitting us absolutely sideways unless we do things differently. So the first thing, look at the pandemic. They reckon 200,000 companies in South Africa. Now, South Africa is a pinprick of a country. 200,000 companies are not going to reopen. That means that there's going to be 2 million people out there, 2 million people who are going to be disenfranchised that are not going to have jobs, that are going to be looking for opportunity. And if you've got a great opportunity, if you've got a great MLM company, if you've got a great product and you've got great systems and we've helped you get going, these 2 million people could have a home with you. And that is damn exciting. And then there's AI. And I've been blowing this whistle for months, or for years, actually. The advent of AI and the fourth revolution is upon us. And it is serious. And I'm going to take you through why I think it's serious and why I think it's going to have a massive impact on the MLM industry over the next three to five years. So IBM has created this computer system called Watson. Absolutely amazing, amazing system. And what it does is it uses a technology called deep learning. So they don't program it. What they've done is they've created algorithms that allows IBM to analyze data, massive amounts of data, and learn from the data. And as it learns from the data, it starts to operate at way, way, way above human capacity. So, for instance, they got IBM to play the world champion in Jeopardy. Now, Jeopardy has got contextual English questions for which answers have to be given. IBM drilled the world champions, just annihilated them. They've then also got IBM, they taught IBM to play a game called Go. And they said, listen, in our lifetimes, no computer will ever beat a human at Go. And of course, IBM annihilated the world champions at Go. So they've actually proved that this deep learning technology is teaching computers how to do 
tasks, especially cerebral tasks, at way higher than human capacity, and it does it fast. It's unbelievably quick. Now, IBM will tell you that this new advent of AI is going to create more jobs. That is like the cigarette industry telling you that cigarettes do not cause cancer. It's crazy. They are trying to sell their IBM systems. They're not going to tell you that it's going to cause problems with jobs, but it's been estimated that about 47% of all jobs in the world can be automated by Watson. 47% of all jobs in the world, I repeat, can be automated by Watson. What happens to that 47% of people who are going to be disenfranchised? It's crazy. Take lawyers. Um, they, what they did is they took Watson and they taught Watson about contractual law. And they gave Watson 100 contracts with loopholes in it. And they gave a team of lawyers 100 contracts, the same 100 contracts with loopholes in it. And both of them went away and found the loopholes. Now, Watson found 92% of the loopholes. And the lawyers found 93% of the loopholes. So the lawyers were better. The difference is that Watson did it in 15 minutes. It took the lawyers two months. Now, if you're going to take a contract to somebody and get them to look for loopholes, do you want them to find 92% in 15 minutes? Or would you rather pay an army of lawyers to find 93% in two months? And that's a question that you need to ask. And obviously, you're going to give it to Watson. And that is their first foray. That's Watson at his beginning stages. Where is he going to be in five years' time in terms of contractual law? Then judges currently, judges are getting Watson to recommend the sentencing. And nine times out of 10, the vast majority of times, they accept Watson's recommendation on sentencing. So the judges are no longer sentencing people. They're saying to Watson, what do you recommend? Watson says, this is what I recommend. And they take that recommendation and that's it, done. And they don't want to take a chance of doing it themselves because what happens if they give a lower sentence and this guy gets out and kills somebody? So they're accepting the, the AI's um, judge, judgment without question. Then take research. You want to find out about contract, contract law in a certain area? In the old days, you had an army of lawyers who would sit down and research this whole thing, find out what was going on, and then provide you with a solution. Well, nowadays, you feed it into Watson. He already knows everything because he's used deep learning to analyze all contracts in the world. He comes back in 15 minutes. He says, this is what you need to know. Done. How about standard contracts? You want a, a rental contract or you want a contract for buying a business or selling a business or licensing something. You feed in what you want. This is the product. Watson spits out a finished contract for you, which you get signed, and it's much tighter than any lawyer will ever do for you. Now, this immediately, I mean, apart from litigation, where you need humans involved at the moment, this immediately puts 15 million jobs at risk just in the legal profession. Let's take pathology. Well, Watson, they taught Watson pathology. And Watson currently is operating at higher than human capacity and also has made some major pathology breakthroughs within this, within this environment. So they give Watson the blood samples. Watson analyzes them, comes back with an answer, nine times out of 10, substantially more accurate than humans. The oncologists are using Watson to, to diagnose cancer and suggest ways of, of treating it. And nine times out of 10, the oncologists are just taking Watson's recommendations. We have a situation where the Watson is doing virtual doctoring. So you can send in your symptoms and Watson analyzes what's going on and can come back to you and say to you, this is what the story is most likely. Go and see your hospital, go and see your doctor. And then of course, there's new automated surgery processes where a single doctor can do a surgery that would have taken a team of people to do in the old days can sit and do a surgery on a person using automated processes and machinery and robotics. That industry alone, 27 million jobs are at risk. Accounting, they've taught Watson to do bookkeeping. He's a better tax expert than any human. He can create credible audit, audits and he can do it fast. There's 2 million jobs in that space that are at risk. Then you talk about call centers. Well, there's an amazing project that they're doing where they've taken Watson and they've taught Watson using deep learning about certain products. So let's say you sell a, I don't know, a modem. They teach Watson using deep learning everything that he needs to know about the modem, everything. He's an expert on the modem. When you phone Watson up, you do not know that you're speaking to a computer. 
He speaks to you in contextual English. Hello, Mrs. Smith, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, fantastic. What's your problem today? Well, I'm having a problem with my modem. Okay, can you try doing X, Y, and Z? And he knows everything. He doesn't need to refer to anybody. He's excellent. What's even more important is he can talk in a colloquial accent. So I don't know if you've done, uh, if you've ever phoned a call center and the person on the other end is one of these wonderful folk and I love the Indian folk. I've got some Indian folk working for me but you can't understand a word they're saying. And they're trying to explain to you what to do with your modem. And after 10 minutes, you're like throwing your hands in the air. You don't know what's going on. Watson can talk to you in colloquial English. He talks with your accent, using your colloquial English, and you understand him clearly because of that. He does it at a fraction of the price. Because what happens? He doesn't take a break. There's no sick leave. There's no bad moods. If you need a thousand seats, you just add another server. If you need 10,000 seats, you add another five servers. That's it. You buy the product, you buy the service from IBM on a per seat basis at a fraction of the cost of what you would pay a human. Now, there's 4.5 million people in that space. What's going to happen to them? And then there's the automated food. I went into Wimpy the other day, not Wimpy, uh, into um, McDonald's. And I ordered off a machine and I plugged in everything. And then 10 minutes later, I went to the front and my food was there. And there was about a quarter of the staff that there used to be. Wendy's has automated the entire process end to end. I watched a video the other day on a pizza making machine that makes the pizza, everything from cutting up the ingredients right away, doing the dough, putting it through the oven and delivering the product in a box to the client. You just type in what you want, boom, out comes a, a finished made pizza. I saw a video which blew my mind of a fully automated gourmet chef. They took some of the top chefs, they put their recipes in, and this gourmet chef, automated um, robotic chef, made the most amazing meals based on those, um, on those recipes, and as good as what the chef would have made them. So what happens to the staff? What happens to the waiters and the chefs, etc.? There's 13 million people in that industry, and those jobs are all at risk of being automated. Self-driving, Elon Musk has cracked the self-driving thing. So he has used deep learning to teach his vehicles how to drive by sight, by vision, not using ring fencing or any of that stuff. By the end of this year, he reckons he's got level four um, automation. Now, what he's done is he's leased all of his cars for the last three years. So he owns a, a fleet of three million Teslas. And what he's done is he's created an Uber style app so all of those cars now that were leased are coming back and he's gonna be putting them into the market as ride share cars. So you will call up your Uber style app, your Tesla app. You'll say, I want a car to take me from point A to point B. The car will drive itself there, pick you up, take you to where you want to go, drop you off and then be ready for another uh, joyride. Now the issue is what happens to the 3 million Uber drivers that are out there because they can't compete because Elon Musk is not having to pay for a driver. So he's doing it at a third of the price of what the, um, what the Uber drivers are doing. So there's 3 million Uber drivers are going to be without work. They've already done their first delivery. This company, Otto, has already done their first delivery of Heineken beer with a completely automated process. Everything from packing the beers into the truck to driving the truck to the place to unpacking the beers at the other side. They've done the entire thing automated end to end. What happens to the 7 million truck drivers that are currently doing that work? And then there's 3.9 million bus drivers in Germany. They've already got automated buses on routes doing the whole automated process. There's 14 million people who are in the driving industry are going to be looking for work. Now, this is where MLM comes in because MLM is providing a turnkey business for these people. And these people are not stupid people. These people are educated. You've got accountants and lawyers and doctors and oncologists and and pathologists, these are people who are highly educated. These are people who are highly skilled. These are people that are highly intelligent. And these are people who in the next three to five years are gonna be completely disenfranchised and are not going to have an income, not gonna have a way of making a living. How on earth are they going to put a roof over their heads and feed their families? Now the governments have come up with this, this um, universal basic income and they come up with all this garbage. But let's be honest, nobody wants to feel like they're getting a handout. Nobody wants to have that sense of not being worth anything because somebody's giving them the money for free. Everybody wants to have a sense of worth. And I think MLM is going to come along 
create these amazing little micro businesses and say, hey, become part of our family, become part of the forever living family, become part of the Acorn Kids family, become part of our family. Let us teach you about these products. Go out and share these products with the world. You can put a roof over your head, food on your table, and you can actually make something meaningful of your, of your life. And if you're clever, you can build up a massive business, an enormous business and earn huge amounts of money. Gail Reynolds goes out, puts in, this, uh, puts in some effort, does a six million pound a year business out of, out of Avon. So I really think that there is a huge good, there's gonna be a massive number of people who are looking for opportunities and people like you guys, the guys that are on this webinar today, there's nothing stopping you starting a small MLM business and leveraging what is happening in the space and growing a client base of people who are going to go out there and sell your products. Now to recap, just talking about MLM, it's a cash business. So it's cash up front, pay on 30, 60, 90 days. There's low to zero overhead. You can bootstrap this business and I bootstrapped Acorn Kids that I, how I got it out, the, out of the blocks. You have high margins because you're not being grilled by buyers. You can outsource your entire infrastructure, either to your network or to delivery companies. Again, there's a, a, a very nice podcast on our um, MLM for CEOs where I, um, I interview a guy who's got a fulfillment company in London and he discusses the whole concept of doing outsourced fulfillment. It's really worthwhile going and having listened to. You can have rapid market penetration because two times two is four times two is eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 4 million. It grows exponentially and it grows rapidly. You've got massive potential volumes because if you train your people how to sell the product properly, you can build up a massive base of salespeople who are pushing product for you. The opportunity is there for millions of people and there are going to be millions of people looking for these opportunities and you can take advantage of this. You've got an opportunity to start a business tomorrow and take advantage of this. I know a lot of you already are doing it with us and you've got an opportunity right now to harness that and make it really something amazing for yourself. You control the entire value chain. Once you get clever, like one of our clients, they were having problem with their supplier. They just went out and put up, put up their own um, manufacturing plant. So now they control everything from manufacturing right the way through to the delivery of the final product. And to get started, you need two things. You need a product or service and you need software. That's it. Everything else is outsourced. Product or service, you've got to have a decent product and you've got to have a decent system. And just bear in mind, the system is just as critical because if you don't have a system that can cope with growth, with volume, with what happens in these businesses and what happens fast, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So NetReady provides you an ultimate man management solution to give you all of the things that you need. If you don't have a product, I already know dozens of people who I can help you with. And next week, we're going to be talking about products, talking about how to source a product, talking about how to to, how to finance the sourcing of the product, etc. I'm going to be doing a whole podcast on that. And I think that would be worth listening to. Now, if you are a large corporate, okay, you need to be looking at getting into the space. You really do. Now, NetReady will pro provide you with enterprise level so solutions. We've got, we'll provide you with dedicated IT resources. We'll do the entire MLM business strategy for you end to end. We'll do all of the marketing and training to get your business up and running. We'll provide you with compensation plan design. We'll provide you with staff acquisition, infrastructure coordination, training. We'll help you with the launch strategies and we'll help you to achieve critical mass. And we do this in conjunction with a global partner base that we have. So we can literally come into your company, we can roll up our sleeves and we can provide you with an end-to-end -end solution to get you from wherever you are into the space and to help you really run a massive, successful international MLM company. But if you're a small person, if you're a single person who's got a single product and who wants to get into the space, we are absolutely ready, willing, and wanting to help you to get into the space. So we will provide you with the same enterprise level systems as we will provide a massive blue chip company. So we will give you systems that can run a big MLM company. Obviously, we cannot come into your company and do the entire setup. You don't have the capital. So what we're going to be doing for you is we're going to be doing things like this. We're going to be providing you with webinars and seminars and training and eBooks. 
Um, MLM for CEO has got a massive amount of collateral to help you get your business up and running. So we will provide you with an inordinate amount of training and support and, try and, and guidance to help you get your business going. Um, webinars, etc. We'll also provide you with template-based documentation. The same thing for the systems. We're going to provide you with an entire template-based mechanism to help you set up all of your systems, get everything going, get you out the blocks. We'll be providing with ongoing blogging and news, keeping you up to date with what's going on in the industry. We will help you design your compensation plan. And guys, please, I beg of you, if you haven't designed compensation plans and you haven't run your own MLM business, don't sit down and think that you can come up with a really successful compensation plan on your own. These things are complex and they require an enormous amount of in-depth thinking. Please let us help you with that. Um, we'll help you with marketing and communication strategies, again, through webinars, seminars, and eBooks. And um, we'll help you with launch strategies. And we'll provide you with ongoing support to help you build your business. So everything you need to create a successful MLM company. So if you're a big corporate, we can come in, we can handle everything for you. If you're a small company, we've got this entire DIY process, which will allow you to get into the space, make yourself a fortune, build yourself a big company, with people who have been in the industry for 30 years, who understand what's going on and who can give you some real guidance and help. Now, if, and there are many people on this particular webinar who haven't actually, uh, um, aren't working with us at the moment. Um, if you want to get hold of me, you can email me at sales at netreadymlm.com. Um, drop me a line and we can have a conversation. I can see where you are. I can show you our systems. We can discuss how we can help you. You can also go to netready.co.za in South Africa or netready.co.uk if you're in Europe or the UK. And then there is an enormous, enormous resource at mlmforceos.com um, where we are interviewing top people in the industry, where we are providing collateral, we are providing you ebooks, downloads. We're just providing a lot of information to help you succeed within our space. Um, whether or not you use NetReady, my heart's desire is still that you become massively successful in the multi-level marketing space, that you go out and not, make a lot of, not only make a lot of money for yourself, but that you help hundreds of thousands of people put a roof over their heads, put food on their tables, and change their destination. Because right now, with the coronavirus and the lockdowns that we're having, people are suffering and they need opportunity. But the coming fourth revolution, the coming devastation that AI is going to wreak on the world is going to require people like us, people, innovative people with ideas and guts to go out there, build these businesses and help people to succeed. So guys, I hope that you guys all really, really enjoyed that presentation. Um, it will be up on, on MLM for CEOs. So please feel free to go and check it out there or show it to anybody else or, you know, create links to it if you wouldn't mind. And, uh, and yeah, good luck. I hope that you guys can see what an amazing, amazing business this is and actually take it to the next level and, and do something incredible both here and internationally.